Hey everyone, it's Paul Taylor and I just wanted to share a quick video with you on everyone's favourite word of doom, which is debt. Now, debt can be scary, but it can also leverage you into business, it can leverage you into property and various other strategies and it can actually create a lot of wealth. Now, a lot of the biggest entrepreneurs you'll ever see have, created, have masses of debt. They're leveraging their own money to create more wealth, more on the back end. I just want to show you a quick example of how you can use debt to create wealth very simply using equity in your own home, for example. Now, just to jot up a, a rough, rough idea of a normal scenario. So someone would have a £400,000 house and say they've got a £200,000 mortgage. Now, this may be most, more than some people's properties, but this is just an example. You know, it works throughout the scale, but they have a £400,000 house, £200,000 mortgage, and they're paying roughly £900 a month on a repayment mortgage over 25 years. Now, one way to reduce their, their cost is to bring their mortgage cost down. Now, they could either go and try and pay down a £200,000 mortgage, try and pay it off 10 years early, for example, do it for 15 years, or they could go the other way and try and utilise debt to create more cash flow to pay down that debt. So it's just a little bit of tweaking the mindset um, to take on more debt and a lot of people are scared of that. But I'm just going to show you here how if you took another £100,000 out of that mortgage, it's probably going to increase the mortgage to about £1,400 a month. So it's another £500 you've got to create to make that money back and more to pay down the existing mortgage of around £900 a month. So what do we do with this extra £100,000? I'll show you now. Right, so I have 100K to play with, what do I do with it? Now, personally, I would go into a HMO on one of the properties, so a house of multiple occupancy. So I'd be generally looking for a three bed house with uh, two reception rooms. And south of Yorkshire is where I've invested before. A lot of the northeast areas are really good, but you can easily pick up a property for 120,000 that will generate you a good five rooms in a high demand area. Now the key is to look at make sure the demand is there for the multi-let and for the rooms, and I can show you tips on that. But one of the one of the um, examples I'm going to give here is looking for a five bed HMO. Rough purchase price for around 120,000. Now for that you're going to need a 25% deposit, so 30,000 um, would be needed for that. And generally, it's very rare that you buy an existing HMO that doesn't need any work. If if they're a good HMO, they will be selling it because it's, yeah, they do generate really good cash flow. So you probably need a 30K refurb on it to get uh, the fire doors in, the legislation um, correct, and you may have to move, you know, slight, slight movement of the doors, etc., to get that commercial, sorry, to get that um, re second reception room as another bedroom. So 60,000 pounds out here, 30 on the deposit, 30 on the refurb, and a bit of legals, etc., within that cost. So you're, you've deployed 60,000 pounds now. So now, what's the running cost on this? Right, so your first cost is obviously going to be the mortgage. <clears throat> they got um, 120,000 property for 30,000 30, down. So got 90,000 mortgage, which roughly is going to be about 300 pounds a month on an interest only basis. Now, generally for me, I would normally go for interest only on um, a lot of these properties, generally because I've got a, a reasonable deposit in there. So um, I feel fairly safe if the market does move off, then there's enough equity there to support that move. But um, bills will be around £400 for five tenants. Now remember, as a HMO landlord, you are paying the electricity, you're paying the council tax, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You're paying all the bills. They, they pay for their food and TV license, et cetera. Um, generally, we would put one TV license on the building though. So voids and agents fees. Now agents fees are anywhere between eight and 12%. So I've allowed for around 10% of 5% for voids can swing in different areas, but generally 5% should be pretty safe. So those bills there, 300, 400, and 300 would add up to a thousand pounds a month in bills. Now I think um, a reasonable rent in those sort of areas is a minimum of 400 pounds a month. So times five rooms, that's 2,000 pounds a month. And some of the areas we're getting nearer 500 pounds a month. So worst case scenario, I think 2,000 is, is fair. And, um, 2,000 in rent in, 1,000 in bills out, so that's 1,000 pounds a month cash flow from this 60,000 deployed from the release of your equity. Now that's property one, we're making 1,000 pounds, 
we still got 40,000 to play with, so what do we do with that? So something a bit more steady and a bit more of a regular income is a single let property and loads of areas in the UK, you can pick up nice finished properties for between 60 and 100,000 pounds. Now, again, you're looking to make sure the demand is there, making sure that the area is suitable for single lets and generally try and go for two bed houses because you're gonna attract um, couples, first time buyer or first time renters and, um, and small families as well. So 80,000 pounds for a single let property is, is quite reasonable in, in some of the high demand areas in the north of England. You're obviously not gonna get much in the south because it's just ridiculous prices down here. But 80,000, you would need 20,000 deposit, roughly 25%, you could go higher on the, um, on the loan to value, but you do get penalized a little bit on the interest rate. So I generally try and stick around the 75% um, loan to value personally. Um, it, may, it may be the case where you need to go higher loan to value just for your circumstances. But 60,000 pounds would be the mortgage, 20,000 pounds of your money would go in for that deposit and you'd probably do another 5,000 pounds in fees and illegals, etc. and obviously the stamp duty. Um, stamp duty varies, varies depending on cost, you may have uh, first time buyer allowances, etc. Um, for mortgages as well, so you may save money there. But um, single let, 60,000 pounds debt, 20,000 employed. What are we gonna get roughly in rent now? Obviously varies the area to area, but the mortgage on this should be around about 200 pounds a month because um, you've only got 60,000 pound mortgage. So 200 pounds a month. The beauty with single lets is the tenant pays a lot of the bills. So electricity, council tax, etc. they will be paying. The only thing you need to really look after is um, the building's insurance and some maintenance is obviously gonna happen. But as long as it's got fairly good condition, a reasonable boiler, you could take insurance out against the boiler for about 20, 30 pounds a month. So that's worth doing on, a, on older boilers, certainly. But um, your bills are gonna be around about 250 to 275 pounds a month, which can sometimes spike due to maintenance, etc. cetera. But you just, it's hard to call that, but you have to allow some money for it. But generally a property like this would rent from somewhere between 500 and 600 pounds a month. Let's call it 550. You're paying out say 275 a month. You're gonna make 275 pounds a month. Um, regular income, a bit more steady with uh, single lets because you don't have the peaks and troughs of people moving out. But I personally like HMOs because you are mitigating risk. People think it's more risky, but I like the fact that if one, one tenant moves out of a five bed HMO, you're only losing 20% of your revenue. If one tenant moves out of your house or stops paying, you lose 100% of the revenue. So real variances in, um, you know, there's, there's pros and cons to both of those strategies. Now, 20,000 has been deployed in that with the 5,000 pounds extra. So we've spent now 85,000 pounds, these are 15,000 and we're now generating 1,275 pounds a month from these two properties. Now we have 15,000 left. Right, so that leaves us with 15,000 to deploy and we only need to make up 125 pounds now to cover not only the additional loan, but the entire, entirety of that 1,400 pound mortgage. Now, if we do that, that means the person that's taken this extra leverage has used debt to pay off their mortgage in effect because they're now generating 1,400 in income and paying out 1,400 on the mortgage. So 15,000 left, we have one, two, five left to get every month is 1,500 a year. So we need to get 10% return on this last 15,000 to actually match it up. Now, 1,275 versus 1,400 is still pretty good. You're still only paying out 125 pounds to live in your own house because you utilize debt. So 15,000, what would I do personally? I'd probably do some retail arbitrage, buying and selling. If you watch the video series I've done on the channel here, I use that a lot. And um, you can often double your money on stuff you're, you're buying and selling. As long as you're buying in bulk, you're buying right, then the opportunities are there to make extra cash. So I'd probably do that personally. I'd probably spend, if I was starting out again, I'd probably spend 5,000 on personal development, trying to educate myself in various strategies, etc. That's one thing I would personally do. Because I think if you have these skills up here, then you have a lot more opportunity to make extra cash. You have a lot more knowledge to go into diverse strategies and different different uh, ways of making money. But this is just an example to show you that utilizing debt doesn't have to be scary. It can often make you money. 
and a couple of simple strategies there gets you 12 7, 5 a month and you've only got to find 10% return on that last 15,000. Now some, some of the property people out there that I know would pay 10% fixed on a, on a fixed rate loan. Now we, we do that ourselves, normally on higher amounts than that, but just to show you that it can be done. You know, there's an element of risk there because you don't have a charge, but it depends on your appetite to risk, as I say. But so a, a definite one I would do is some of the retail arbitrage stuff, some buying and selling. One, because I love it as a, as a, as a trading mentality. I like buying and selling, I get a really big reward out of that. So I hope that makes sense. Comment below if you have any more questions and any more suggestions for any other videos and other ways of making cash and business ideas. I'd, I'd love to put more content out there and share some more ideas with you. So if you comment below, like the channel, please subscribe as well, and also watch our zero to 100K challenge series that is on this channel, watching how my son and I have gone from zero cash at the start of the year to over hundreds of thousands of pounds now, and we're still going. So have a good one, guys, and I'll catch you on the next video.